Right now, SpaceX is valued privately at 800 billion, and Wall Street is already modeling an IPO of 1.5 trillion. Something about this gap doesn't add up, and the kind of gap doesn't happen often. And when it does, it usually marks a turning point. Why this could be the most important IPO of our lifetime? why this could change industries and change lives. And honestly, I couldn't be more excited. Because once you watch this video all the way through, you will understand why I am genuinely jumping with joy about this one. SpaceX isn't a startup anymore. It launches more rockets than the rest of the world combined, and it's not a news or breaking news. We all know that. But here are some staggering numbers. There are about 9,000 operational satellites in the universe. There are about 12 to 13,000 in total, but 9,000 are currently operational. Guess how many owned by SpaceX? Roughly around 6,000. That's about 65 to 70% of all active satellites. Can we just let that sit for a minute? 70% owned by SpaceX. That's not market share, that's orbital dominance. It operates the largest satellite constellation ever deployed, and it sits at the center of US defense, space, and global communication. This isn't a moonshot company, this is infrastructure, and the infrastructure is valued very differently. In my personal opinion, 1.5 trillion can easily add up to 2.5 trillion. This is very much possible when it comes to IPO time. So the question is, why Elon change his mind? For years, Elon Musk said SpaceX would never go public. And at that time, that made sense. Rockets are expensive, R&D is brutal, and public market punishes uncertainty. But one thing changed everything, Starlink. Starlink quietly transformed SpaceX from a capital-burning rocket company into a recurring revenue infrastructure business. Millions of subscribers, government, airlines, militaries, everyone is using Starlink. That's predictable cash flow, and we all know that Wall Street loves predictable cash flow. Here's where numbers really start to matter. The 800 billion valuation reflects what SpaceX is worth privately, but public markets don't price companies on what they are today. They price them on what they control tomorrow, and that's where 1.5 trillion comes from. Every global network needs four things, power, cooling, compute, and connectivity. SpaceX control all four. Let me show you how. Take a look at this. So let's talk about why Elon Musk wants to IPO SpaceX. Why do they want to make this company public? What is the requirement? And why this is such a brilliant idea if you really think about it. So all of a sudden, I think Elon mentioned this on October 31st or in October sometime, that there will be space data centers. Since then, we have seen everybody chime in. Google chimed in, OpenAI chimed in, and now everybody's talking about space data centers. So what the heck are space data centers? Let's break it down in very simple terms. And again, I'm no expert. This is the information that I gathered from internet by reading different articles, by going online and trying to see what are space data center and how this could be a complete game, game changer for every tech company and why everybody is basically running after it. So let's take a look at this. So space data center, any data center, forget about the space right now, I'm gonna take this off right now. Any data center need four major aspects. Number one is power, number two is cooling, number three are chips, and number four is connection. That's how data center operates. Okay, so what's power? We have huge electricity, electricity bill or huge electric connection going into the data center. They are very power hungry. That's why companies like Constellation Energy are doing so well because they are basically talking about nuclear power and how they can generate these data centers. So why is power such a great idea and why is power free in space? That is because of sun. We have sun 24 hours, satellites can be placed. There is always sunlight there and that is going to be a power source which will never go out. So now we have a power source, which is of course free and will never go out. So now the battery backup, which is a huge cost for data center, that demand has gone to zero. We don't need battery backups anymore because now we have the sun that provides the battery that is uninterrupted. Second thing is cooling. What is more cooler than an air conditioner? Space. You see, when we go on the flight, we see how the temperature drops, and we are not even flying in that altitude. Space is really cool, right? Not cool in that way, but cooler. So now we have zero degree temperature just on the dark side of the satellite, so we can get all the cooling from there. All they need is just one radiator on the dark side, and they get the cooling through that. So we are talking about a cooling which is without the use of any air conditioner or expensive equipment. Now we have free cooling. So we have taken care of two things, free power, free cooling. 
Now let's talk about chips. That's the only thing that is going to basically cost money other than of course building the space infrastructure. But we are talking about chips that is, uh, SpaceX is going to get from outside. And now, right now, T TSMC and Samsung are the major suppliers. But Elon Musk has also played around with the fact that Tesla might manufacture um, chips in the coming future. And this could happen actually sooner than later. They're talking about that shortages of chips are really holding Tesla back and SpaceX back. So they're talking about how they can factor their own chips um, by Tesla, which is going to be amazing, of course, news for Tesla investors and SpaceX investors. Then let's talk about connection. So how are data centers connected right now? Data centers are connected through vacuum sealed fiber optic cables running between one data center to the other data center. What happens in space? There is no vacuum required, and those connections can be made laser from one satellite to the other satellite uninterrupted. So now we have the connection between the satellites. We have the free power, we have the free cooling, and CHIPS is the one that is supplied from Earth basically uh, in those data centers. So now we are looking at a fully operational data center at one third of the cost as per Elon um, of a ground data center. So the cost is really where it comes to play. All of a sudden now Starlink makes such a great idea or sounds such a great idea right? Constellation of satellites running at all times, connected through lasers, and now we have the data center operated. Now, why the heck do we need a data center and why space data centers or space data centers are better than the ground data center? Other than the cost, take the cost aside. Now take a look at this infographic. This is genius. When I was looking at it, I was like, oh my God, nobody ever thought about it. But again, Elon, as we all know. Okay, this is your phone. Okay, just imagine that, that this is your phone and you are basically trying to make a call or, or not call, but let's say you're searching something and you are getting the data from uh, your phone. What happens? The signal goes to cell tower. Then from cell tower, they go to a base station. Then from base station, they go to an aggregation center. It's probably sitting somewhere in the city. And then it goes to the data center. And then the whole channel comes back in the same path. And then it comes down to your phone. So now you see the pathway went this way. And then once the data center was collected, it came this way. So now we have the whole circle that happened. What happens in the space data centers? None of these things are needed. All we need is a phone, of course, your device, the communication device, and the satellite data center that's sitting on top because the connection is now straight going up. So the information goes this way and the results travel this way. So imagine this, the cost saving of all this along with the cost saving of the data center, right? So we have two cost savings here. We don't need any of the cell towers. We don't need base station. We don't, we don't need aggregation center. All we need is basically a phone and a satellite. And now this satellite is connected to another satellite. That satellite is connected to another satellite. That satellite is connected to other. And now we have the space data center that's basically performing all the compute and then basically are sending you the information that you need. This is genius. This is mind blowing. And I think this is going to change the way we communicate in today's day and age. And I'm super excited to basically just present this. When I was researching about this topic, it was so thrilling to see how it's all coming to play now. How this thing is going to be bigger, massive than anything we have seen so far. We thought Nvidia was big. We thought Tesla was big. We thought Google was big. Watch what SpaceX will do to the technology. And guess what? Space is hard, rockets are hard, and there's only two companies right now that are basically operational in that level. One is Starlink, 70% is controlled by Starlink, uh, sorry, by SpaceX, and then Blue Origin. Blue Origin is there, they're testing, they're doing, Jeff Bezos is, is actively involved in that, but I feel that SpaceX is going to be the dominant force between space communication, and that is the next level of, of, I would say that is the next. Anything bigger than AI is the space. So I'm super excited. Now let me show you a few other facts why this all makes sense. Okay, so the 700 billion gap makes sense. It's the difference between private ownership and publicly tradable infrastructure. So what is the real reason of this IPO? Why did IPO happen? This IPO isn't about SpaceX needing money. It's about liquidity without losing control. And IPO gives capital without selling Tesla, without borrowing, and without surrendering control. That's a strategy. There are a few scenarios that might fit. And of course, no one knows how this is going to play. But there could be a Starlink-only IPO. Launch system stays private. Cash flow infrastructure goes public. 
dual class share, limited float, scarcity premium, public investors gets exposure, and Elon keeps the keys. That's one way I could see this possible, or the entire SpaceX can do an IPO. But there are always risks when it comes to IPO. There are regulatory risk, geopolitical risk, capital intensity risk, and of course, Elon Musk distraction risk, which is always there. So why I feel this is the end game for Elon Musk? This IPO isn't about rockets. It's about permanent capital, funding Mars, funding AI, funding global infrastructure, innovation converted into ownership. If SpaceX goes public, it won't be just an IPO. It'll be transfer of power. We have already seen how Elon Musk have reacted or how his net worth has doubled. Now Elon Musk is equal to Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg combined. Insane. I've seen an expose where Elon Musk agreeing to the fact that space could be a hundred trillion economy. That's the entire world right now. And we are looking at the possibility of multiple decades before this could happen. Yeah, I feel strong and I honestly feel that could push our civilization to the totally new dimension. Welcome to the club. I'll see you in the next one.